All right, so I was smiling is because my director in my ears is just sounding like a pilot. Uh, is there a female word for pilot? Or a female that is a pilot is called a pilot, coming with immediate effect. So I'm taking off with immediate effect. I have uh, Steve Wachiko, the MDR Tech Steward Asset Management, joining me. Welcome to the program. Now, let's get started. The MPC meeting has started. It ends tomorrow, two-day policy meeting. How critical is this March MPC a meeting? Because the MPC will be looking at the confluence of issues. Unemployment rate, 33.3%, though the MPC has encouraged the CBN to continue its interventionist measures. Approach. Yes. Inflation skyrocketing to 17.3%. Uh, uh, food prices at its highest. 21 you know, food prices at its highest as inflation, food inflation is at its highest. Food prices we're seeing now, we've not seen it in like 12 years. A tepid economic growth of 0.11%. So a confluence of so many issues. How uh, do you think honestly, that this uh, MPC will uh, navigate this? Honestly, I, I, at this point, I think uh, I will not jealous the office of the CBN governor or the rest of them there because they have a lot to chew. They really have a lot to chew. Well, I see a situation that... Uh, by the time they have their meeting today and tomorrow, the communicable will still read what we had in the last two months. That's uh, having to keep... M November? Yes. Or January? January, uh, January the last sorry. two months. Yeah, the last two months. January, mm -hmm. MPC, mm -hmm. or meeting. So we'll foresee a situation where... Uh, because if you're looking at the unemployment ratio, you're looking at the inflation rate, which is the key indicator, the key parameter to guide their decision. The inflation rate is already up there at... 17.33 percent and you have the food inflation rate already above 20 percent so you don't expect them to either lower the uh, mpr to somewhere within 11 percent or but that's where it is now no it's at 11.5 percent to yes. take away 50 basis points point. uh, to perhaps caution the right the rising inflation rate but you cannot take that away because so even the monetary the yields are all rising a bit you find out that the couple of uh, treasure bills or most of these instruments in the money market uh, floated a couple of weeks ago. We started seeing the read, the yield rising above 5 percent, 7 percent, 8 percent. So the CBN has a lot to chew. They really have a lot to chew, either to up the uh, NPR from 11.5 percent to maybe 12 percent, or to reduce it further to 11 where, percent. Where, where, where do you think they will stand? Uh, are, they, are they going to be hawkish or dovish based on the fact that inflation is rising? That's, that's the main point, challenge yes, they have. Which, so, is, uh, which is also their responsibility for to maintain. To maintain. Yes. So will they leave NPR at 11.5 percent? While inflation is on the is on the, on the rise, yes, it's on the and you cannot the rise. go. You cannot. This that's why I say they are already in a dilemma. They or can they reduce it because unemployment is increasing. Oh, that's another to challenge. If, if you reduce it, you're already having a low uh, regime for interest rate, though it's rising from like four percent mm -hmm. to five to six and eight percent. You cannot still rise it. You cannot still reduce it because already you have a very one of the lowest you ever had. So, yes, it's possible we can have a single-digit uh, uh, MPR rate, but as we stand now, uh, I don't think they will further reduce it because the banks are already, uh, if they have to reduce it, the, uh, the yields will also crash further again, which also affects Nigerians because mm. a good percentage of Nigerians or a good number of people also rely on the dividend paid, sorry, rely on proceeds from their so fixed yeah, yeah. deposit because it's an investment instrument. It's just that the yields are very small. People have the money market players. They have their money. They have their capital. They are playing in that market and having to sustain and pay staff salary, do other things based on the yields they receive from uh, coupons, they receive from CBN or uh, receive from the federal government through the issuance of bonds or they receive from the commercial bank through the issuance of commercial paper. I have people who have maybe 50 million, 40 million they don't have much to do with it. They fix it for a period of time. It pays school fees to them. So if there is a further crash, reduction in this very MPR rate to 11% is going to also affect what you have prevalent in the commercial banks. Where do you stand? Do you think they will... Well, I still, I, still, I still will advise them to hold for now. To hold. To hold, yes. Uh, in as much as, as we speak, 
the factors surrounding the increase or the rise in the inflation rate is not something you could say is no longer uh, fundamental. There are fundamental issues now. Before now, when we have the COVID, it was just as a result of chain, the food chain supply, as a result of the lockdown, as a result of uh, farmers had a crash. But most of these issues are now permanent. No. The insecurity you have mm -hmm. in the North is the production of these crops to the market is now more like but, a... But, but if you take a look at inflation, uh, the, the, the things that are attributing to the rise of inflation would you say it's monetary cost? It's not, it's Th not that's cost That's why I money. said, do, do, yes, do you understand? That's, that's why so it's no it's longer artificial. You wouldn't say it's more of artificial. Mm, it's they more are not money put on the system? Exactly. Money put on mm. the system and also other factors surrounding the environmental or the working ability of uh, doing things in Nigeria, which I mentioned the issue mm. from the food inflation, which has to do with further headers, crisis, low input or low yield, and also the transportation of these items to the where these goods are, where these perishables or these goods are actually needed. So these are the issues and they are fundamental in nature. Fundamental that is not something you just wake up and stroke it. The insecurity is there. A lot of farmers can't assess their farm. This is a cropping season and you have the insecurities, killings, ransacking and sacking villages. People are running away from their homes and these ancestral homes are the places they do the real farming. People are moving. If you watch a tech a statistics of people moving into this urban area, like those uh, moving into Abuja or moving into Kaduna or moving into some other area apart from their rural area, you find out that this very issue is persistent. That's why I say it's more of fundamental now. It's an issue that you can't just wake up because even if there will be an increase in the output of uh, pro agricultural mm. production, it, you have to return or resettle back these indigenous to their homeland. Mm -hmm. You need to recycle them before they can even talk of. And agriculture often is a seasonal product, it's a seasonal period. If they cannot farm now to harvest uh, July, August, September, uh, there is no other time. This year is almost gone. If they cannot return to their homes or return to their villages and do the crop in this period, they are required to be in their farm, tilling the ground and doing all sorts of preparatory mm -hmm. before the rain sets in. Okay. I think we'll leave it there for the MPC right now, and let's move over to something else. So let's go over to, uh, let's begin to talk about the Global Money Week that has started today. Of course, this is Money Line with me, Nancy, and I'm talking about Global Money Week. I talk money every day, economy, finance, business, markets, investment. So uh, let's take this. When we come back, we'll delve into the Global Money Week, we have some parents online waiting uh, to discuss, uh, take care of yourself, take care of your money. Of course, Global Money Week, raising awareness for youth and children around money issues. Let's quickly take this, we'll be right back. You want to start saving your own money back? If I have, if I have, I can save. Baba can save. Me, because of my dad used to give me money, that is why I used to save. I mean, I used to learn some work. If I have money, I can spend. If I have, if I have some, the one I can keep. I can keep. Sometimes I can use it. That is why I used to save money. I've been saving for more than 14 years now. So it has been helping me in my needs. Like when it is festive period, when I need money to do something uh, from my savings and get money and sort out myself. So it's very good saving. I save, cause I save my saving box because it used to help. Anytime you don't have money or you, need, you want to use money for something, you can use it from there instead of asking your dad or your mom. That's why I like saving. And in, anytime you want to pay your school fees and your parents don't have money, use your money and pay. From December, on November 1st, to date, 3,500. I don't save money, I don't like saving money because they to steal the money. Because they to steal it. My schoolmates. I like money. Because money, money is life. Why I used to save? Used to help. Many times used to help me. 
when, like when you don't have money, when your dad don't has money, so you let you pay your school fees. You can use your your saving money to pay your school fees. That can help you in life, and that your school fees that you paid will so help you in life too. That's why I used to save money. I save it in my saving box. What's the I do save because saving help you in life. In case you don't have money, you can also take from your saving money to save, to, to buy what you want to use. You can use it to pay your school fees, you can use it to buy what you want to eat. So if you save, you can have it have enough benefit for you. Important of saving, it's very important to save. I worked in a bank before, I know what it means to save. Teach your children how to save so that they will be able to uh, 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 um, um, groom their future. At the end of the day, a child that saves has a future. Right on that note, I said earlier that we're looking at Global Our Money Week, which, which kick starts today, March 22. The theme take care of yourself, take care of your money. Let me bring in the parents that are joining us right now online. Hello, parents, and welcome to the show. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Is it only women I'm Hi. seeing there? Is it, I can just see only one man. I will quarrel with the men. It's still a women's month. So I can fight with anybody this month and get away with it. Is it only women that are, uh, you, you know, should, be, should talk about grooming their children and all of that? But let's come quickly. And let me start with the man that I'm seeing there. Uh, you can unmute yourself and answer this question around, do you, I, okay, do you have children? Let me start by asking that first. <laughs> do you have children? And if you do, are you teaching them already how to take care of themselves and how to take care of their money? Are you there? Can you hear me? Okay, can someone else take that question then if uh, the gentleman there is, isn't ready? Can I see my uh, uh, audience, please? Okay. So, so, so who wants to go ahead with that question and tell me if you're teaching your children how to save and perhaps invest? Yeah. I can. Yes, go ahead. I can see your hand up. Hello? So, yes, go ahead. yes, go ahead quickly. Good morning, ma'am. Good, good morning. Go ahead. Hello. Go ahead. I can hear you. Yes, ma'am. I have a child. Yeah, I have a child. And I also have a girl. Mostly. You know, mostly, most of these people, you can't uh, really advise them to save because they don't have where yeah, they can get the source of income. So the only way a child gets to save most times is when maybe uh, a family friend come to visit the house and they want to live and they give that child money. A thousand naira, so okay, you can buy. As a parent, the way you can teach your child how to save is to collect that money and get a saving box. And get a saving box for that child. And you will now what? Put that money into that saving box and tell the child, anytime anybody gives you money, make sure you put the money into this your saving box. In so short time, we are going to get the save and get the money. Okay. And you use it for valuable things like school fees. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I, I I think I have to hold you at that point and let let's take someone else's um, contribution. Um does any of you agree with her uh concerning the fact that only perhaps when visitors come come to the house that you will teach your children how to save. Can you begin to groom no. your children on how to save, begin to give them pocket money or allowances or all of that? Who wants to take that? Can, can, okay, can I see so your well, hand up? Good morning, uh -huh. everyone. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Yes, good um, morning. Go yes, ahead. My name is Oluwa Shewa Detiba. And um, for me, it's not only about when visitors come around and give your children money that they can save. I, for one, tend to advise my children on how to, first of all, build on skills that can help you make money. So I'll give you an example. My oldest daughter, she does some graphic works, and I said, okay, if you can do this for us at Tusky, this, I'll give you this money. So I encourage her to build 
build skills that can help her earn money. And when she earns that money, she, I also um, help her to open an account where she can be saving. Sometimes she's, she earns money from building um, graphic works for people on the internet. Sometimes it's even from me. And she says, oh, mommy, somebody gave me this money. Mommy, I did this job. This is this whole book for me. Put it in my account the next time you're in the bank. Because she's not old, old enough to... to, to to open an account. I've also encouraged her to join the financial literacy club like that okay. of Aurora, Good. where they teach you know younger children on how to manage finances. Okay. So she knows that every money that she gets from some of the soft, soft skills she has or being given by so she's it's kept in, 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 in the bank for her that she can reinvest in the future. Okay, so I think I, 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 I think we've gotten that. Let, let's go to someone else. The man I called earlier, are you ready right now? I can see you on his suit and I can see your hand up. You're on a black suit and a white shirt, with what I can see. So go ahead. How, how, how do you teach your words? <laughs> Quickly. I asked earlier if you have children and how oh, you yes. teach them. Okay, go ahead. Quickly. The uh, will be six this year. So all I know that money okay i think i have to halt you i think i have to halt you because your audio is not coming out right mm -hmm. i can see the the woman also uh, a woman there raising up her hand just below my screen uh okay go ahead just below my screen the woman raising her hand i'll come back to uh, uh, all of you later so quickly go ahead with your contribution the theme today take care of yourself take care of your money how do you teach your children young children Hello. and also young adults okay good okay morning. good morning good morning okay good morning yes um nancy it's a pleasure to be back here again okay i have younger children from ages the age range two to eight so i have noticed that my daughter she writes she writes songs she writes poems so I encourage that because I know that when you have a skill set, you can earn. And secondly, I opened, she also draws, she knows how to draw. So I have already seen that she's talented in the art. So what I do is I'm trying to group her so that these skills can be marketable in the nearest future. I have also approached some other people that are into these things so that they can buy what she's doing. That's number one. Secondly, I opened accounts for my children because they are still very young. What we did, myself and my husband, we invested some monies in, in some places that we know that, okay, from here, this child can be receiving this and this amount of money. So we save for them so that in times where we are not financially buoyant to meet one or two of their needs, we can, from the savings, meet their needs. And also, I teach my younger, my um, first child, because she is already, she's a girl and she's already eight years old. We talk about savings, that you have to have a savings culture. And she asked me, why? Why should I have a savings culture? I say, okay, number one, you have to save so that you can be able to meet your needs. Number two, you have to save so that when you start earning, you already know the importance of savings. Because what is money, after all? Money is, is an object that we use in exchange, mm. in exchange for goods and services. So once you have that skill already, you know, that character trait of you that can save, then when you start earning, you don't have to okay. give out everything that you have. Okay, thank, thank you for your input. Let me go to the lady I can see. Yes, you are raising your hand right now. And if I can see you, let me differentiate you well. I think you're on a native. You're wearing a yellow. If my glasses still sees well. So well, let me come to you now. Uh, uh, you can go ahead with your contribution. Okay, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, I, I listen to those kids, and it's obvious they understand the concept of money. But when it comes to money, the quality of money, it is And it is quite important now, as early as possible, that the whole idea of money goes beyond savings. Very true. Savings and investment. And even quality. The child understands the difference and wants how to save money. For my own child, I, I try to make him understand that there is no free money. 
he has to earn money. Money yeah. is being earned mm. and it's not, you must work for it. Mm. Now for these kids that are quite young, how do you expose them to work? And I'm not saying they should go on the street to work. They can earn money based on what they do in the house. Maybe certain house curves, they can earn money from them. And then they take responsibility of whatever they earn. They have, the, I think it's, it's important to expose them to both spending and saving because mm. when they grow up, they face the reality of spending and buying. And the society where we live gives us the impression is a consuming society. It gives us this impression that the more you spend, the happier you are. So we must correct that <laughs> at a very early age. The kids need to understand that they are responsible. I like the thing. Your money, your life. They are yeah. responsible for the yeah. Allow them to make little, little choices in the house regards how to spend their money. It is also very important to let them know that money is not free. You earn it. Thank you. Thank you very they much. Can th th thank you very much. I like the fact that you said that money is not free and money is not just about savings. We should go beyond savings now to investment. We have just about two minutes to the end of the program. Let me take the lady in red and glasses also just like as I am here. And uh, you, you want to give your contribution very quickly, 30 seconds. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Susan Abed Mikey, and I have four kids, and um, one is in the uni. But I've always spoken to my children. I always tell them that um, to be remain wealthy, to be wealthy, you need to create your wealth. You have to produce things that are tangible to be able to add value and touch lives. So for the older one, during the pandemic, I said, what can you do? Produce your sanitizers and sell. So she was able to do that. We got the materials. So now she has, she's in the university. She has her sanitizer. She's selling to her friends and the fragrance. She has, she produces this room fragrance. Then the other one is in secondary school. She, she makes beads. She's very good with beads. I tell her, whatever you produce, you should be able to sell it, add value and touch lives. And when you do this, save the money for tomorrow because if you don't have a saving culture, you cannot survive the volatile nature of Nigeria and the whole world at large. So that is how I'll be able to teach them how to save money to take care of themselves. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. I want to thank you all for uh, joining the conversation uh, this morning. But just before you go, Steve, you, uh, you've listened to what our parents had to quite say. Quite an excellent yes. submission. So. We, we, we had to involve them today, you know, because yeah. the Global Money yeah. Week, all through this week, take care of yourself, take care of your money. Uh, underpinning the fact is about children, is about young youth, is about young adults. So what do you think? Honestly, like I said, in fact, the most beautiful aspect was those interview of those kids, Children. getting it raw from mm. them. And this is what we continue to teach the children, to catch them at that very age, mm. to tell them the essence of savings, and which has to do with living it, even not just only for them, for them also to live it for their children, children. If you have this savings culture, if you have this discipline in saving, it helps you to do one thing. It helps you to call one thing I call that very team, that very beast I call acute gratification. You know there are some people, once they have 10,000, they have any excess money. They because want to buy pure water. Free. They want to do this. They are coming back from work. In that hold up, they almost have bought and bought. If that 10,000, they will finish it. So if you have this savings culture, it helps to cut that very or team that beast I call acute gratification. Always want to buy, always want to spend. So it's very, very important that you catch them at this age, teach them the essence of saving, An teach investment. them, uh, thank you. I'm it gives them, they yeah. now have respect for money. for money. When you have respect for money, you have value you add to it. Mm. You don't just spend for the sake that you have cash or you have money with you. You spend subject to things that you must have put in a scale of preference that this is good to spend on, this is not good to spend okay. on. Okay, thank you very much, Steve, uh, for joining us. And thank you, parents. Can I see you all again? Is it possible, my director, so that I can... Say bye bye. Thank you all. Uh, thank you all. Thank you all for being a part of the show today. And nice to get your insights. Let's continue to teach our children uh, about money. Let's continue to teach our children about financial uh, literacy. It will add to financial inclusion in the country. I am Nancy Naji. Uh, be the best you can be. I'm the